and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Breen. Joining this week are Tom Allen, Tina Kublenyu and Rhys James, Nigel Ung, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. Before we begin the show proper, it should be noted, this is the first time we've been back since that whole COVID thing kicked off and we've had to make the show pretty different. For example, all the panellists are doing the show encased in Perspex cubes. Uh, they don't know it, but the air will slowly be drawn out of the cubes over the course of the show. <laughs> Do they fog up if we breathe on them? <laughs> yeah, These are like yeah. against the rules. If I, if I fold yeah. this up and draw a dick on it, am I going to have to draw that for continuity every ten seconds? Yeah. <laughs> Please, whatever you do, Hugh, don't take out your breast and press it against the glass. That is... <laughs> That'd be too weird. <laughs> Don't <laughs> take out your breast and place it. Do it. They do it. As well as that, we have a tiny audience in the room with us. We're delighted to have them here, but they are socially distanced. Uh, they are separate from each other or put together into blocks of four who might not know each other. We haven't checked. It looks like we're really near the end of a game of Guess Who. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Supplementing that, we have an audience as well on Zoom. Hello, the Zoom audience. Uh, they will be getting the jokes maybe 30 seconds later than we make them because of their dodgy home Wi-Fi. That's how we have to make these shows now. We start tonight with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. <laughs> Athena, which category would you like? Uh, I'll have home news, please. Home news it is. The answer is alcohol, flour and toilet roll. What is the question? Is it, what do pubs have to serve together to comply with the new rules? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what else do I also buy if all I wanted was just condoms and lube? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, what can you use to trap an alcoholic baker with a bowel problem? <laughs> Is it, what would you find stuck to the wall after an orgy at Mary Berry's house? <laughs> Is it, what are the sugar babes' birthstones? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what's on the Andrex puppy's rider? <laughs> Is it, what will people soon be bartering with in Manchester? <laughs> Is it, the only thing I want to see on your wedding list? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen a chest freezer, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, what... I need for my elaborate bum wiping ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in our new trade deal with Japan? What will we be swapping for Cornwall? <laughs> <laughs> what are the next three fragrances of Lynx? <laughs> <laughs> okay, does anyone want to give me the correct answer? Yeah. Is this what visitors must assume is the theme of my bedroom? <laughs> Is this the thing that people are panic buying at the moment? That they're is, worried about a second lockdown. Uh, that's absolutely close enough. Uh, thank you very much. Come <laughs> uh, on, very good. How yeah. did I get it? How did I get it? <laughs> I don't know how I get that. Yes, the question, of course, I was looking for was what products have seen a surge in sales in the last month? This is the news that British shoppers have been buying more alcohol, flour, and toilet paper, thought to be anticipation of tighter lockdowns in the future. How have you all been dealing with the ongoing... Buying booze. I've bought so much booze, I've had to tell my Ocado driver I'm having an illegal rave so he doesn't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> the problem I've got, Dara, is I got engaged in week one of lockdown, which <sighs> was a rookie error on my fella's part, really. <laughs> like, to do it in week one. But now I've just got to keep him pissed until we've actually, you know, booked the registry office. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a danger that during lockdown you'll grow bored of the situation and just end up breaking up? Is that... What's going to happen? Oh, Dara, please. Will it work, scary. Dara said? Will the perspex screens make it a more difficult to... No, you're probably asking probing questions about people's relationships breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Sainsbury's, I went to the supermarket, not to stockpile, but I needed to get some wipes, some, oh, some yeah. antibacterial wipes, because I needed to wipe the outside of my antibacterial bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, it's the most COVID-covered surface in history. You touch yeah. it every time you think you've touched a sneeze, and then you wipe your hands with it, and then you touch it again, because we're all idiots, that's what we're doing. So I was yeah. going to the supermarket to get some wipes, and then when I got the wipes, I was going to go home and wipe the wipes, OK? Because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> People forget that step. You've got to wipe the outside of the wipe packet. There's an old phrase to help you remember it. If you don't wipe the wipes, the wipes wipe you, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Reese, 
you locked down on your own? Because you're like my mum when she hasn't seen yes, anyone yes. for three weeks. She's got to <laughs> yeah. keep talking. <laughs> I was locked down with your mum, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fun wearing masks. I mean, never has there been a, a more brilliant time to impersonate a dentist. <laughs> I love the mask stuff because Asians have been doing this shit for ages. Yeah, yeah, it's a very... So we're well prepared, you know? Imagine the next pandemic came around and the only thing that could save you were selfie sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stop oh, yeah. this again. That's great. <laughs> it's really difficult wearing masks. If you wear glasses, it's almost impossible, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. what's my dentist doing here? Does he steam up? <laughs> and I've just said the only way of getting around it, in your having a conversation with someone, is to take them off during the out breath and then put them on during the in breath. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a train last week for the first time in months and I found that the mask thing has turned me into a Victorian lady because I was eating, as Victorian ladies do, a mm. packet of skips on the train. <laughs> uh, and and, and I would eat it and I would eat the skip and then I'd pull the thing across. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. And then Starry, lo like load that. a few more skips in. <laughs> <laughs> the Zoom thing is, is tricky, you know, as comedians, sometimes you have to do Zoom gigs, and I've come to hate them because <laughs> you ever fart on Zoom and then the yellow box lights up? <laughs> oh, you know, like, there's a box on it, Dara, it says enhance your appearance, right? And a few weeks ago, again, absolutely true, I had to do a Zoom call with Russell Kane, and it was early in the morning, and he said to me, oh, you know there's a box you can tick that says enhance your appearance? Oh. I had ticked that box, Dara. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a pattern of bullying emerging here. There is. Right? That's, That's terrible. Have you thought about maybe changing your personality? <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, was any doing homeschooling, by the way? Sorry, just uh, and... oh, well, No, I'm too old for school. You are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a solution here. Just furlough the children. Just have oh. them... Out, yeah, like, like the World War II evacuation. Yes. Have them home 20% of the time, 80% of the time, stick them in a the field. <laughs> Sorry, can you imagine being homeschooled by Dara? But, oh, not no. science again. <laughs> <laughs> He just, all he does, <laughs> I, I bet all he does is dresses his kid up as robots and makes them fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I like, I like Today that. in the hope, you <laughs> shall be circuit break. <laughs> <laughs> Total lockdown. <laughs> fight! <laughs> OK, why has the government clashed with MPs and mayors in the north of England? Because the uh, government has kind of put the, the north on tier three for being the friendliest part of the country. Yes. <laughs> no, no, tier three is a special prize we're it's giving you. Yes. <laughs> Manchester wanted an extra five million yeah. and they wouldn't give them an extra five million, which means the government has a very different policy when it comes to things that don't work. We'll yeah. pay for test and trace, won't pay for waiters in Manchester. Uh, they have yeah. a very... I thought that joke was much better than it got. <laughs> <laughs> I feel all the bits were there, but yet it didn't add up to a joke. It's really irritating. No, I thought you were yeah. saying something sincere. And yeah. at, at this time, like, you're never sure if people are being funny or sincere. So oh. you always have to err on the side of, like, I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't help London MPs' views of Northern MPs that he's wearing a cagoule to do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if he just, it was, it's seeing someone furious in a cagoule. <laughs> Absolutely livid. I mean, it was pretty Manchester, though, wasn't it? It, it is, to be fair, and I love it's Manchester. Great. It looks uh, like he's not unless he'd had the, the hood up with the yeah, furry yeah, yeah. bit around it. <laughs> uh, he basically, and, uh... he might as well have turned up at 6 a.m. on a bender just straight from the Hacienda. Popped <laughs> <laughs> on some sunglasses and gone, We're not fucking doing it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> The thing I don't understand about all the tier system, I don't understand the risk system. I don't understand how it goes. I think it goes medium, high, very high, doesn't it? Yeah. So why happens a small? What happens to that? It's like they've based the whole thing on the cup sizes at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> and they really wanted to call the three risk levels tall, grande and venti. But they couldn't... They couldn't... <laughs> Because it was too metropolitan. It's too early. Too early. <laughs> yeah, I want to see my family back in Malaysia, but then they say when you land in Malaysia, you have to do a two week quarantine. And I'm like, uh, how much do I really like my family? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in America when I had to come back when this whole thing got called. I, I was in America and had to rush back from America. Uh, Nara, get we get it. You went to America. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Where were you going? Yeah. I'm all brave. Where were you? Jeez. Yeah, I was in New York. LA. Anyway, uh, it was pretty good. <laughs> anyway, had some meetings, uh, you know, just some shows. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> 
the, and I had to rush, but I had to rush. But when I went, I thought, oh God, they're not going to give me the ticket. They're not going to give me the ticket. I'm going to have to pretend it's really important to get back because I don't have a ticket for tonight. I've got a ticket for like a week's time, but I'm rushing back. And I said, look, is there any chance I've got a flight? Can you? And she said, of course, of course. And I, I obviously made it too serious. I really, I've got to get back. And she said, of course, right? And there are like five flights a night from, from New York back. In, and she gave me the first one, which left 25 minutes later. And she said, go now, go now. And I, didn't, I couldn't go. I ah, know, I'd like to do some shopping first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping to maybe get oh. some dinner and <laughs> lunch maybe for a while, chat to the other guest. No, mm. oh, I'd better go now. <laughs> and then to run through the airport, to race through the airport to get to the right. gate, stamp the thing. And so arrived, this is like March the 13th, arrived on the plane, buckets of sweat, <laughs> getting onto the plane, looking like every COVID nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Pouring off me, I'm, I'm out of. I can't, I'm, I'm breathing badly. I'm sweating. I'm going. Oh, good thing we're on this tube. Mm, you and me sitting, sitting next to me. Going, ah! <laughs> It yeah. sounds like me. I'm, a, I've got, I'm going through the perimenopause right now. Nobody will sit next to me on the tube. I'm just the hot flushes. The yeah. <laughs> A great life. Life's yeah, brilliant. Good um, life. All come together 2020. That's Earlier on, I said I was engaged. Nobody clapped and cheered. Yeah. In America, they were. That doesn't count now. That doesn't count. patronising me now. Yeah. And, and no, the perimenopause, no, no. did you want a round of applause for that as well? Yeah. <laughs> It's really rubbish. It's a bit just before the menopause. Right. You know, like, it's, it's spicy. Matching, peri -men -men no, no, that's no, the no. peri peri menopause. Peri -peri. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Ah, Good point to Carl, Bettina, and Reese. <laughs> now we play a round called Quarantines We'd Like to See. <laughs> <laughs> this game involved Nigel and Tom, so you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about a subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. Let's spin the wheel. And the first topic is food. Can I have somebody to come in on that? Nigel. Yeah, I'm from Malaysia and, you know, food is a pretty big thing back there. Rice is a big staple, you know. If you go to Malaysia, like five kilos, that's the smallest sack of rice you can get in a shop in Asia. <laughs> Let me go to your Tesco's here. You seem to have the most adorable little sachets <laughs> of 100 gram rice. Like, who's that for? A fly? <laughs> I sent a photo of that to my mom. She was like, why are they selling the free samples? <laughs> why are they selling rice in cocaine bags? <laughs> Every Asian household owns a rice cooker. Yeah, and I see you guys getting confused. When I say rice cooker, I don't mean you hire some Chinese guy. <laughs> It's a device that makes rice perfect every time that you don't use here in the UK. You know, I've seen how you guys make rice here. It's tragic. <laughs> There's two main methods. Number one, saucepan, right? You boil the rice and you stir it like a witch in the 1800s, just... <laughs> Sometimes it's still wet afterwards, so you strain it with a colander. <laughs> if you aren't laughing now, you're thinking, isn't that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> Second way and the worst way of all, Uncle Ben's instant rice. <laughs> the microwave stuff, beep, <laughs> bing. Okay, that's enough Asian culture for me. <laughs> Squeeze my lunch out of this pouch. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben's has Indian rice, Mexican rice, Cantonese fried rice, but he's an old black guy. <laughs> Why are we still buying that product? <laughs> you buy Uncle Wong's jerk chicken? <laughs> I wouldn't, and he's my real uncle. <laughs> also, don't put your phones in rice to dry them. It doesn't work, and it pisses us off. <laughs> We're nice enough to make those phones for you. Don't put it in our food, please. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's Nigel Long. Thank you. OK, that leaves with Tom. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is parties. Yes. This is exactly like all the parties I go to. Um, <laughs> uh, my mum's got a friend called Joyce, and uh, she likes to tell me about her. Once she said to me, eh, Joyce, 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 Joyce has tried to do herself in. I said, oh, my God, how shocking. She said, yeah, we're all surprised, cos she's only just had her kitchen done. <laughs> but 
much. Uh, Joyce is a very old friend of the family. Like, I've known her for years. She's somebody who worries about everything. Like, she's got one of those faces that's always contorted into the look of panic, anger, and yet regret. So she's always walking around like this. <laughs> and then sometimes she'll use her eyebrows to replace a word. So, like, once she said to me, Oh, that woman next door, she's... <laughs> Turned out the woman next door was a chiropractor. <laughs> a little while, a little while ago, she decided to cheer herself up by getting her downstairs toilet done. Not a euphemism. <laughs> she got this toilet done based on a toilet she'd seen at Gatwick Airport. <laughs> it was her dream toilet. And then she decided to have a party to show it off, right? So we all got invited. Well, Mum and Dad got invited, and they said, we're not going to pay for a sitter. So I had to go as well. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce had tried to be organised for her party and she'd done an online shop for the buffet. Trouble is, she'd never done an online shop before. She didn't understand about the amounts. Somehow she'd managed to order eight kilograms of ham <laughs> and one bag of salad. You've never seen so much ham in all your life. <laughs> Except for maybe in this performance, am I right? <laughs> There was rolled ham, there was folded ham, there was ham sandwiches where the bread was ham. <laughs> and I'm at this party and they're all, all the friends are very desperate to let me know that they're down with the gays. They're, they're good with the gays. And one point, Joyce came over to me and said, now, Tom, Tom, tell me, when, 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 when did you first know that you was... <laughs> and I said, well, I've never been a chiropractor. <laughs> Points for everyone. Come on, sit down. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> In preparation for his debate with Trump, uh, Joe Biden is practicing talking to a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the lowest budget Madame Two Swords in history? <laughs> is he saying, is this the internet? <laughs> I meant to be in a live debate, but somebody told me this was the way to the stage and then they locked the door. <laughs> is he going, I don't know why, but I've got a feeling this room might be tapped. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea, but that room looks like a nightmare to paint. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where he goes to get recharged before the debate? <laughs> <laughs> this is a picture of Biden with all his childhood friends who are still alive. <laughs> oh. Oh. What, too much oh. for a topical news show? Oh. <laughs> I know he's only 77, but he really does have the world's most complicated catheter, doesn't he? <laughs> what is going on, though? He's discovered the pipes to Trump's spray tan tank. <laughs> That's, uh, that's Joe Biden. He's standing in the US presidential election, which happens every four years. <laughs> absolutely right. Thank you very much. You. What do you make of Joe Biden as a candidate? I could make uh, maybe a chair. <laughs> yeah. He is only narrowly ahead in the polls. I know. Right, which I know. is quite upsetting, is it, that you can only be narrowly ahead? <laughs> of Donald Trump when you consider that I think if you threw a pepperami into a Weatherspoons, you'd probably hit somebody who'd be a better president. <laughs> but that's his only selling point, that he's not Trump. Mm. Like, a tin of carnation milk is not Trump. Mm. I, think, <laughs> I think that's why we're struggling, cos what else is he? He's an old guy to be shielding, really. <laughs> <laughs> They're both so old. It's funny, they, both Trump and Biden think they're each other's rivals, you know? Like, Biden 77, Trump 74. Their only common rival is winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 77-year-old versus a 74-year-old. Why don't they just settle this like most American men with a game of checkers in the park, yeah. OK? <laughs> uh, here's some things the likely things that Donald Trump has been compared to recently. Uh, here's Donald Trump as a pork scratching. <laughs> hey, here's Donald Trump as a piece of frozen tuna. <laughs> And here's a genuine caterpillar. Uh, <gasps> which distant family member has been supporting Joe Biden? Oh, I Ooh. love this. This is, right, he's got a third cousin in Ireland, yep. Joe Biden, right, who has been on the campaign trail in Ireland, where it literally doesn't matter. And but his name is Joe Blewett. Yeah. Last <laughs> <laughs> name for your cheerleader. It's like a cheerleader called I don't know Jane. You dropped it, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Blewett. 
that. I think they must be scraping the bottom of the barrel if they need this guy to be an endorsement for Biden, you know? Well, well, like... they, well they don't think this is the thing that'll win it for him. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever Joe Blue it says, he's very much the bellwether state. Uh, whatever, way, whatever way Joe goes on the day. I mean, Joe was all Hillary and then at the last minute panicked and went Trump. And then, you know, so, but look, look as, as family members go, there's Joe Blue it, but is there, uh, are there other family members who are making things slightly more yeah, difficult? His son. Yeah, his son. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hunter Biden. Yes. Yeah. Who's been accused of uh, all sorts. You can't be a good guy with a name like Hunter, can you? No, it's That's not the a problem. name that inspires... Yeah, he was the worst gladiator. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but also, should you be responsible for your children's actions? I'll tell you what, if Joe Biden loses the election because of the actions of his dodgy son, then the Queen can hand her bloody crown in and all. <laughs> As my dad always says, you can't judge a man based on his son. <laughs> <laughs> very old saying, it's very true. Meanwhile, how's Boris done in the last six months? He's done a magnificent... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's that balance the BBC's been looking forward to. <laughs> What did Boris Johnson threaten to pull out of? Was it no woman he's ever been inside? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zoom went for that in a big way. Uh, are there more than eight? Yes, there are. There's, there's other Zoom people who just... Have, we, just do, we just popped a few of them off. Right, right. Yeah, mm. so... There's, uh, there's, there's Johnny Camera too low at the start. Uh, then there's... Then there's Billy, I'm not really in San Francisco. Uh, you can see... You can see the picture flickering around my ears. Uh, the that guy, guy. who's up lit, like, a, like he's reading, like, a horror story out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Three, three Terrifying. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he is. He's shifting uncomfortably <laughs> as well, actually, cos he knows the camera... <laughs> the camera flicks around, we see a body suspended from the ceiling. <laughs> He's, he's giving us a tour now. Wow. Oh, yeah. What? His, his what are you asking? What sack. desk is that? What is he? Um, it's the gallery here, isn't it? Wait oh, a yeah. second. He's the guy working on the show. Oh. <laughs> you watching the show. You're supposed to be working on the show. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake. It looks like he might be in the International Space Station. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hang on, I wanted to talk about the fact that during the lockdown at the moment, yeah. the, Tier 2, you're not allowed to have any kind of carnal relations with people outside of your house. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. that's very difficult for single people who live with their parents. <laughs> and also, um, what, it basically, is life imitating art, isn't it? Because you cannot have sex with your partner, but you can have sex with a tradesperson. It's like you have to wait for a plumber to come round. It's feeling a bit old. <laughs> you just reminded me that I've got pest control coming round next week. Oh, I'm wow. very excited now. <laughs> Isn't sex banned, like, indoors for couples who live apart? Yeah. You know, yeah, so, yeah, ugh, now I have to bring my blow-up dolls to the park? Ugh. Uh, so you live in a different house to your blow-up dolls? Yeah. <laughs> well, too many days, sorry. One, <laughs> if one respects one's blow-up dolls, yeah. one pays the rent, look after them. <laughs> they have dreams, too. I'm funding them through college at the moment. Do you want to be a dancer? Yeah. <laughs> He's quick, squeak. Uh, or, or would you like to work in cyber? <sighs> <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists <laughs> can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Commercials that never made it to air. Do you have a crippling addiction to masturbation and biscuits? <laughs> Try working from home. <laughs> <laughs> this sofa is full price. <laughs> <laughs> Want to get compliments on how much weight you've lost? Buy a massive pair of trousers and stand like this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> if you like clouds and you like oceans, we've got both. Sky Atlantic. <laughs> Eight out of ten cats prefer your neighbour's house. Cats are traitors. <laughs> Fire in the hole! Try Caniston. <laughs> we sell our turkeys in wooden coffins so that you can pretend it's a funeral and have 30 people round for Christmas. <laughs> 
<laughs> this advert costs hundreds of thousands of pounds to make. Please don't skip it in three, two, <laughs> one, you <laughs> fucking bastard. <laughs> Bat soup. The delicious taste of six months off. <laughs> <laughs> Airbnb. Yes, that is your sofa in that porn film. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's theft. <laughs> Please. Please buy our product. We really need to buy our product. We're going to go under if you don't buy our product. We are Corona Lager. <laughs> <laughs> Super dry. Conveniently named after the effect wearing it has on women. <laughs> <laughs> Ryanair. Not just an airline. It's also the name of our cheapest sandwich. Rye and air. <laughs> Condoms. Uh, you get what you pay for, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Reese James, because Ed Gamble's busy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely lines from a sci-fi movie. We're going to have to put Gotham City into lockdown. Someone ate Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I'm not your father, but I can be your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we put you in cryogenic suspension to make the journey more bearable. It's amazing technology, but it does make Megabus slightly more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> OK, prep the rice chamber. Someone dropped R2-D2 in the toilet and I want to piss off Nigel. <laughs> Everyone, set your devices to stun, because I've got this fabulous new hat! <laughs> Luke, I am your father. <laughs> well, I'm Boris Johnson, so the odds are pretty good. <laughs> How can we tell you're not a robot? Hold up. Which of these squares contain a traffic light? <laughs> Yeah, that's all very well and good, but we've got a points-based immigration system. Um, <laughs> can you pick fruit with your tentacles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! It took my eyes! I can't see! But I'll just drive to Barnard Castle, make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you're a Dalek, you have to check in with the app. <laughs> The Overlord is pure evil, and he just doesn't care. He knows that every time he presses his buzzer, a child dies. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it, Captain! I don't have the power! Uh, you're in neutral? <laughs> <laughs> E.T. just text home. Nobody phones anymore. You're so embarrassing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I just got it. Ryan here. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I'm going to beam myself down to the surface of the planet. Oh, oh, it's so hot, it's hot! It's molten hot! Why did no one tell me? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, don't honey me. You've shrunk the kids. <laughs> Luke, I'm afraid the ship's crew have refused to go any further until they've had smashed avocado on toast. I knew we shouldn't have tried to get home in the Millennial Falcon. <laughs> Fal <laughs> oh, <laughs> the crew refused to go home till they've had avocado on toast. We shouldn't have. No, oh, I can't do it either. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's harder than it looks, and I've gained a lot of respect for you, Angela. <laughs> Ryanair. <laughs> That's 
the end of the show. This week's winners are Nigel Ang, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. <laughs> Commiserations to Reese James, Athena Kudrenu and Tom Allen. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Darwin. Good night. <laughs>